right. Welcome to the Levi Blue Show, where we talk about life, overcoming daily struggles, and everything in between. I am your host, Levi Blue. Good morning, everybody. Steven, are you still doing important things? I'm doing very important things. I'm uh, orchestrating things in other people's <laughs> lives that they have no idea is about to happen. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, it's all for the glory of God. All right. Well, yeah. I'm going to let you go ahead and continue doing what you're doing. So we actually... Hey, uh, I am. So that is you. That is me. No, that's, that's him. That's Levi. That's no, yeah. yeah. So to this morning, we have a very special guest. Uh, many people know him as Tank, also known as uh, Keith Lawrence. Uh, how you doing this morning, brother? I'm good. How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. good. I can't complain. Me either. I got to get my screen working here. I guess it went off. There we go. Maybe. Now you're blurry. There it goes. Let's try it again. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am your host, Levi Blue. Hopefully you got your coffee. Did you get your coffee this morning, Tank? Sure did. I even brought you one, brother. He even brought me one. <laughs> and you got me none? Didn't know you were going to be here, Steve. I apologize. Right. Well. I got you. I got you. You want one tomorrow no, morning? No, that's all right. We know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to texting. <laughs> yeah. you, go, you go back to that important yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so, uh, and my mic, let me see. Can you hear me really good? I can hear you great. All right. Just making sure. Maybe I'm just, can, let me turn can, it up. A, there we go. Turn it up a little bit. Can you hear me good? I can hear you great. Okay, cool. All right. So, Tank, uh, you, so you're a coffee drinker is what you're saying, right? Yeah, I'm a coffee drinker. How do you like your coffee? I like it frozen. You like it frozen? Yep. Just just frozen or you you know? Uh, you can throw a little caramel in it, a little whipped cream in it, uh, some uh, some chocolate milk in it. All the good stuff. Oh yeah, if, if it's if it's just coffee, it's not just going to my lips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how's your week been? been blessed man really it's been blessed i uh yeah found a new way to uh to cope with uh with the the fleshly life things and that's by uh getting in the word yeah while i'm at my desk yeah oh you have a desk yes i have a desk yeah you, you got a little pretty little ornament on the on the top of it or what i guess yeah. <laughs> it's usually me sitting there though <laughs> oh, so you're the you're the pretty little ornament. It's on there. <laughs> uh, Steven, did you get that worked out? You caught, <laughs> hey, you caught me sitting back down from being important. Yeah. Uh, Nobody yeah. knew. No, uh, well, now they do. No, we're cool. Uh, Tank, thanks for being here. I'm very grateful that you uh, have dropped by to bring us a message and insight. You know, you like that. Yeah, I do. I love that. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm just willing to be of service. You That's know? right. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, uh, gentlemen, we have a fun fact. Are you guys ready for the fun fact this morning? Let's hear it. Let's you ready? Yeah. Let me, help me find my fun fact. Uh, <laughs> uh, fun fact of the day. Are you ready? Giraffes are 30 times more likely to get hit by lightning than people. What do you think of that, Stephen? Stretch your neck out there. Huh? <laughs> Try to be the one. Oh, where'd it go? Oh. There you go. Okay, all right. What do you think about that tank? That uh, giraffes are 30 times more likely to get hit by lightning than people. Well, I can see them definitely being 30 <laughs> times more likely than me because they're only about 30 feet taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking about, Steven? That, that they're not just tall, though. They're big. They're That's large true. animals. Yeah. Just their torso, their legs, everything. So, yeah, they stand out there. They're above most things. What do you think God was thinking when he was like, I'm going to create this regular body like a horse. And I was like, oh, here's extra pieces. Let's just put this long <laughs> neck on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it enables them to eat. Look, I'm a, I'm a, I grew up on science. You know what I mean? Jacques Cousteau and... Anything back in the 60s and 70s that was on TV, they called it educational, whether it was or not. Mm. So we got National Geographic, things like that. I love animals, man. It gave us a chance to see what God really did create. And like you said, what was he thinking? You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. All right. Well, today uh, we're going to have a time of testimony. I think it's going to be really good. We have Tank here with us this morning. Uh, how does one get a name like Tank? How does that work out? Well, you know, so uh, 
I have a former life we don't have to discuss necessarily. And this guy come up and he said, man, you carry yourself and you walk like a tank. You just bulldoze your way around and yada, yada. I'm going to start calling you tank. And so it stuck. Gotcha. Yeah. That's so what, the short version, by the way. What he's saying is, is not to mess with him. Oh, you got that out <laughs> That's of that? That's what story? I got out of that. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought I was glad to be around him. Oh, well, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. don't get the name confused with the fact you're sitting in front of a teddy bear today because God has graced me with patience and tolerance, love, love. and understanding. Amen. Yeah. I thought you said Care Bear, not Teddy Bear. Dang it. I did uh, say Care Bear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, let's just jump right into this. Uh, yeah, where's my questions at? I almost lost my questions there. I skipped one there, I think so. So, Tank, um, where, did, where did you grow up? Did you, are you from Tulsa or? Actually, I'm from Wagner initially. Yeah? Yeah. What was that? What was your upbringing like? Uh, it was a regular middle class upbringing at first, and then, of course, flesh, flesh ways get in the way, and then you end up in a broken home um all i knew was baseball back in the day so that was how i thought that i could make everything okay with my parents was by playing better pitching better hitting more home runs things like that but for the most part my upbringing was all right we had definite tough times you know i remember when all we had was one can of chicken noodle soup really and that was all we had in the, in the one bedroom apartment with my mom and three kids and she knocked a whole box of BBs off a shelf and they fell into the chicken noodle soup and she was bawling her eyes out feeding us that chicken noodle soup. But you know what? The same woman that we talked about last night that, that has punched me in the mouth before, she always did her best to, to provide for her kids. So my upbringing really was great. It may not be silver spoonish, but I had, I had parents that loved me. Now, 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 was both your parents in the household at the same time or? Up until I was six. Okay. Yep. Okay. How many How many siblings do you have? I have one older sister, one younger brother with my mom, and then I have bonus one, two, three, four, five bonus brother and sisters. So you're the third child? I'm the actual second child. I'm the middle child. But then my mom remarried and my dad remarried, and I got blessed with five more brothers and sisters, one with my dad and four with my bonus dad you got an older brother an older sister younger brother older sister younger brother okay I yes, understood thank yes, you sir. Right. yeah I'm, I'm the baby of the family so i'm the brat you know <laughs> he, gets, he gets anything he wants yeah well i there's a joke i always say when they say the oldest the youngest uh only child because mom and dad stopped at perfection and then you go that's it right and then people always yell middle child like oh, oh no one cares about the middle child <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, um, I understand. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but all jokes aside, so you actually, so you said baseball. Did you, did you grow up playing baseball a lot? Were you planning on being, going to college for that or? I had planned on going to college and even there were dreams of me with uh, me and other people thinking, oh, he's going to be the next Fernando Valenzuela. Whether that was true or not, I don't know because, uh, Darkness took a hold of me about my freshman year, and I only made it to my sophomore year in baseball, and then my life went sideways towards the dark. Yeah. So uh, without getting into a lot of details, what what would be something that – what was that transition like that you uh, – that, like you said, darkness took over, that you began to just kind of be led astray? Um, I started following uh, fleshly desires and being influenced by the – older kids because they were the cool guys that wanted to hang out with the young guy and started doing some of the things the, they did and well unfortunately I started doing them and couldn't stop mm. on my own even though I tried numerous times by myself to to do that yeah it don't work alone so how, how long how long was this journey that you were on before you finally was like the aha moment that that God moment 21 years wow Wow. Yep. So if you don't mind me asking, how old are you how old are you today? Forty seven. Forty seven. So you wow. Yep. Wow. What do you think about that, Stephen? I'm uh I'm in awe. 
21 years, that was a short run. Some people wait longer. You know? okay. Yeah, you did good. Well, the, I, I, I told someone one time, a guy was like, man, I'm 50 years old and all, all the time I wasted. And I said, imagine all the time you still got left. Yeah. Imagine, you know, you got exactly. you, you still got eternity left. Yeah. You know, 50 years is just a blink of an eye compared yep. to what God's got. You know what I mean? So Amen. Well, that's good. Um, so you played sports and uh, that you were going to be a baseball player. And then all of a sudden things took over. So you say you just followed the, 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 the things of the world, the fleshly things. So did you ever get into gangs or anything or you uh, or did you just kind of just sex, drugs and rock and roll kind of thing? I ran with some guys that like to wear red. A yeah, lot, yeah, for quite a while, and then, um, then it was just the party, party like a party like a rock star kind of mentality. Yeah, party like a rock star mentality without yeah. a rock star's bank account. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. <laughs> hey, what do you mean it's Saturday? <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, since you've had a life that you've had, is there anything you, is there a day you would like to relive in your life or, or you just said, you know, my best days are in front of me. I can't go back and think of a day that I would like to relive. I mean, really, even, even with the path that I've been down, which is not very glitzy and glamorous for a lot of years of that 21 years, I don't know a day that I would like to go back and relive because I know that God's got something better planned in the store for me than I could even possibly do on my own by going back in time and relive in one moment. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, think that's why we're given choice. You know, like you said, I don't have to go back. I can look at it. But I don't have to go back and do it. Amen to that. And as far as forgetting it, I'd just soon not even talk about it. We're good, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's my mentality. We're good. I, I left it at the cross, too, you know. That's right. And the main thing for me is to remember not everybody walks that way. I get in a lot of trouble because people think I'm a, a, a polite way of putting it is unconcerned. But it's not that. I just know what you're going through, and I know you can do it too. You know what I mean? That's right. right. It's yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's good. Um, so with since we're bringing up God, and that's what this is a God show, and, oh. it's, it's, you know, it's a, a family show, but it's also a God show. Uh, what brought you to know who Christ is? Like, when did God be? We had we had an episode a few a few weeks ago. Uh, when did God become real? So, what in your life? When did God become come real? You know, man, it's funny. December thirteenth, two thousand twelve, at about three twenty four a.m. Everything that my dad had been trying to get me to do and just put my trust and faith in God came to light, and. I was being arrested again, and you know what? For Fox, what? For what? No, you got that. I yeah. jumped right in there. You has been arrested for what? For distribution of narcotics. Yeah, large amount, small amount. About twenty point seven grams. Yes. So my no. way of thinking, a cube of butter is sixteen ounces. Yeah. So a how cube, would I decide? A cube and a quarter. A cube and a quarter. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. And I had a moment, you know, it wasn't the first time I'd been arrested or anything like that. You know, I've got a nice little rap sheet. Right. Um, but in that moment, that, that Tulsa County Sheriff deputy was asking me questions, and I had this calming peace hit me. One tear rolled down my cheek, mm. and it was like something said, be still. You're, d- you're done. And I just leaned my head back in that, in that Tahoe, and I said, take me, and I'm done. I did not realize until... I walked into church three days later when I got bonded out by an unlikely source. Which church? This church on the move that I went church to first. My, that's okay. where my dad was attending. Okay. And I walked in there and sat down, and the pastor started, uh, Willie George started uh, preaching a sermon. I looked over at my dad, and I said, did you call him or something? Mm. He goes, no, nah, man, that's God <laughs> reaching yeah. you through him. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, poof, epiphany. That was God that touched you in that Tahoe, let you know you're okay. Just seek him, lean towards him, and I'm going to be all right. And that that was where the change happened. You know, I got 11 and a half years clean from that entire lifestyle. And what happened to the pound and a quarter? Uh, actually, another God moment. So, of course, drug court denied me. I've got after formers. I've already been to prison twice. And uh, the judge said, 
what have you been doing this last year? And I said, I have been, I've been living a new way. Yeah. I said, God delivered me to a program that's helped me gain one full year of a different lifestyle. And he goes, okay, can you prove it? And I said, yeah, I've got my sponsor sitting in the, in the stands. I've got my mother who wouldn't allow me on the property of the job I currently have, but asked me to come back after I gained so much time. I went through treatment. I said, and, and I am feel amazing. And he goes, really? Looked over at the uh, DA and they said, you know what? We're gonna put you on 10 years paper. Oh my. To see if uh, you really do this. But if you come in here at nine years, 11 months, 29 days and 59 seconds, uh, 29 minutes and 59 seconds, bef- but one second before your 10 years is up, you'll go in and do all 10. So how long have you been doing it now on paper? Uh, December 19th, 2023, that, 2023, that paper ended. Praise God. It ended? It ended. I'm off. Man. Man. Dude. So how long did they hold you to it? Two years. They, Come on. They, for two years solid, man. I'm talking once a week drug test. I saw Jesus there. And yeah. Come on with yeah. me. Go. Tell me a story. Two years straight, they, they were on me every week. Yeah. I was paying my 40 bucks. You know, they were surprising. Hey, come in and drug test. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, we're stopping by your house. They didn't yeah. tell me they were stopping by my house until they showed up <laughs> at my house. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> but because I had found a new way to live and, and God was guiding my path to the best of my abilities that I would allow him because I was still not fully engulfed in seeking his face. Yeah. He still was there and showing me the way. Um and after two years, they said, man, you're like the model probationee. Love it. We don't even want to see you no more. Yeah. I said, cool. And I said, do I still got to pay my 40 bucks? No, nah, man, you're good. That's the best part. Yeah. Eh? And they finally <laughs> say, no, nah, you're good on the money, man. Yeah. And I said, I, saw, I was like, thank you, you know? And, yeah. you know, that was, a, that was, a, that was actually, that was my Christmas present in 20, in 2015 was, uh, was uh, getting off that probation. Yeah, because man, the good judge signed now. off on it when they said he's not no longer going to be supervised. Yeah. And they closed out my DOC case. And I would love to say that everything's been great and I've got my pardon, but yeah. I did get denied my pardon this past year. Well, something to strive for next year. So uh, yep. the pound and a quarter. Mm-hmm. What was it? Methamphetamine? Yes, it was. Okay. Yes. There you go. Now that's my arch enemy. Yeah, mine too. Not as in, uh, I have a special grudge towards it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything I surrender to that, that lifestyle, it could still use repair today. You know, the damage done. There's a song that says the toll. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a true story. We all sacrifice something in it. Mm. But you gave an ounce of meat, a pound of cure, in your story and your testimony. And you're also a living example of Jesus Christ at work. Amen to that, You know brother. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Don't regret anything. Keep going. I most, S- most certainly will. Say that again. You said an ounce. I couldn't say it again. An ounce. And then, what did he, that was good. Like, he, like, flipped that whole little thing. Oh, a pound of cure. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh. stole, I stole a couple metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> Mix them up a little bit. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so, when I hear you talking, Tank, uh, and I actually wrote this down last night, but I, I know it's a God thing. If you could describe yourself or your situation in three words, what would it be? Blessed, joyful, and forgiven. Yeah. Praise God. So this is what I wrote down last night. Saved by grace. That's three words. Saved by grace. It's funny because uh, I'm thinking about changing the license plate on my motorcycle. Yeah. To saved. Maybe. To saved. I just, I just searched it two days ago at work and thinking about ordering it instead of tank. Yeah. yeah, they got to allow you to do that on your. Uh, you should be. It's mine. If you can do tank, you can do save by, or do save, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I, I I hope so because if not, then that they're they're telling me how to how to try to utilize my faith and yeah, nobody, nobody but God right influences my faith. Are they gonna? Uh, are you gonna like do the e backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Would that be sabe? <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, French. But, but, uh, it, you researched that the, the motorcycle, the saved, isn't taken? Yes. It is? No, it's not taken. No, good. Yep. That's the main thing right there, as long as somebody else don't own it. I want it forgiven, but I tried spelling that about 16 different ways. Yeah. That 
made sense to me, and they're all taken. So I went with saved. And I'm oh like, yeah, I need to order that because my license plate's due in May, actually. So oh, well, yeah. praise God. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. kind of bike you got? A uh, road guide. A road guide, really? Yes, sir. Oh my. You want to ride it? No, because then I'll have to let you ride mine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> that pretty little thing back there. We'll look at it someday. Okay. Someday soon. All right. Oh, you want to sell it? No. <laughs> no, I've been very afraid that I may have to let it go, and I don't want to do that, you know, but I'm blessed too. If got you got to let it go, let it go to me, and I'll let you ride it whenever you want. Mm. If. Mm. I'll just let you keep it. It still takes away the freedom. I know that's right. You know right. what I mean? It takes away that right joy of saying, me, God, and uh, we're going where? Yeah. yeah. Me, God, wind in a direction that I don't know yet. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're riding up. Man. Did this turn into a motorcycle convention or I, what? Look, I, told, <laughs> I, I told our faith-based fan club sometime back I love motorcycles. Yeah, I know you do. And, and I'm not, I've never been, the nearest I've been in a gang is a, uh, to saddle up to one of them over at Myers and Duran back in the 80s like I was important, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had an old wore out t-shirt and that was where I was at, you know? Yeah. Everything else was lost to the other side of the world. But the blessing is, is now I get to have that real idea that I'm going to go somewhere do something. Amen. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, hey, I'm, I'm going to switch gears on you real quick. I'm going to go back to the to your story. So si so since uh, you've f been following God, what, what's life been like? How would you explain that to somebody who is, you know, maybe uh, younger than you, still trying to learn or still trying to grow? Like, you know, what, what has life been like since you've been following God? Uh, well, first word is amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't start or even start without saying it's amazing. I mean, I'm so blessed, man. There's so many things in my life that I said I wasn't going to do again. You know, I, I bought a house and lost it because of active addiction. Um, I got married. That went way south real bad. And I was like, I'm never doing these and this and this again. Those are not going to happen. And, of course, God laughs at us when we say that we're not going to do something that he's got planned for us. And uh, he laughed. And so today I'm married to a wonderful woman. That, that's, a, that's a woman of God in we do have a very nice house that we bought in 2020. Um, but take away the monetary stuff, man, and just the peace that's within my heart is better than I can ever remember in, in my entire life. I think the only other time that the peace may have came close when I was like six to nine years old playing baseball on the baseball field. That might be the only time that I felt the peace and the joy. And it sounds funny, but that was really like my peaceful place. Yeah. And, man, I... I've got everything I need in that little satchel back here behind me for when I'm going through something. You know, like, all I have to do is, is like Pastor talks about, is just open the word. The word is my sword. All I got to do is open the word, man, and it'll totally change my perspective or just soothe me and calm me enough. Say a little prayer, read a couple of scriptures, and it's like, it's really not that bad, Keith. And mm. before, I did not know how to do that. Before, it was open up another baggie, go rob this guy, you know, just all destructive, bad, ill will, no good intentions. And today it's just like, wow. Wow. God, God is, is it amazing? And, and it all came down for me just stopping my thought process. Mm. Cause my thought process always drives me usually into a trash can or the back of a car. Mm. You know, it's a crash and burn experience. Yeah. And take time to pray first. And mm. that's the biggest thing I do is that, you know, the pause meant that I'll pause, pray, respond. And, and it's just the life lessons I've learned over the last 11 and a half years of, do, of, of doing something different completely that I see, yeah, well, when I react, normally when I'm reacting, I'm reacting and, man, I'm causing damage. So now it's, I'm going to use the cliche, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And, and what I've learned is that, well, actually, he would walk off and, talk to his father yeah so why don't i stop and talk to my father yeah and that's been the biggest one for me is activating my spiritual fitness activate my spirituality and it usually starts with hey god thank you for waking me up let's get this day started guide my steps guide my mouth guide my emotions mm. why do you think the holy spirit brought you to god shine light church 
because he knew that I was going to be tested and needed a place where I would fit in. And he knew I would fit in with you guys. And like Pastor Levi and I were talking, it's crazy because I show up to a Men of Valor breakfast when he spoke in July of last year. The following morning, Scotty asked me to come to church. I said, I'll be there. Yeah. Because the moment I walked through the doors for that breakfast, just this peace hit me like, you know, almost like a peace in, in, a, in no voice, but a voice that said, welcome home. Mm. A week later, my dad, um, my dad was in the hospital. I, if, if y'all want more, I'll tell you more. But my dad landed in the hospital on August 7th, a week later. Mm. And uh, that was a tough one for me because hey, he was my best friend. Mm. A week from coming into the church? Yep. A week later. And, and that tattoo represents his passing? Yes, sir. What year? 2023. 2023. Yep. What I, day? August 8th, he passed away. August. August 7th, I went to church. As we were leaving church, I got a phone call that your dad is being rushed to the hospital. Yeah. And he lasted actually off the ventilator for 12 hours and 27 minutes. And yeah. at 8.51 a.m. on August 8th, he passed away in St. Francis Hospital. Can I be personal there? Yes. I had to deal with the situation. Did you have to unplug the machine or anybody take responsibility for it? Me and my stepmother agreed to live up to his uh, DNR. Yeah. And his DNR was, do not put me on life support. Do, do not, not run a tube. Yeah. yeah, do not put a tube down my throat. Well, they did initially, and we told them, hey, his, his, the will says that he does not want any of this. And we said, take it out. And that doctor said, will you guys be prepared for him to t probably take not even a full breath before yeah. he goes? They took that thing out. 12 hours and 27 minutes later, he finally took his last breath. Praise God. Here's the, Praise God. Here's, mm, here's the cool thing about it is that, you know, I got arrested for the last time on December, 12, uh, December 13, 2012 at about 3.24 a.m. Right. Around that same time on August 8th, that morning, I wasn't leaving his side. I was in a chair that was uncomfortable, but I was right there. Holding, he would, had my hand on the bed. Yeah. And around 3 a.m., my dad reached over, grabbed my hand, couldn't talk. He, he blew his mouth out. Um, but he reached over and grabbed my hand, and he, we just was locked in this stare for, man, I can't tell you how long. It Sorry. may have been 20 seconds, but it was I, to me it felt like an eternity. And I told him, I Infinity, said, Infinity, yeah. He looked I'm into not, it. And I, and I told him, I'm not leaving here Praise God. without you. Either you're going to go on up and prepare a place for me to come visit you, or you're getting out of that bed and walking out these doors with me. But I'm not leaving until you leave. Wow. And uh, about five hours later, he took his last breath. Thank mm. you for sharing that, man. Yeah. Look, that's yeah. far yeah. above and beyond what, what I even expected. Thank yeah. you. Mm. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you, brother. Man, all right. Well, we're going to take a break. That was pretty deep stuff right there. That was good, though. Real I really life. appreciate you sharing that. That's, that is life, and that's you know, but, that, life. But, that, but that's part of your life. It's part of your story. Uh, the humbling thing is, is that God used that situation to just kind of draw you closer to him, you know what I mean? And so uh, I'm glad you are at our church. I think it's awesome. Me too. Um, you know, I just noticed I have to bring in some funny into this because really? of that moment. Uh, we're all three bald guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but here's uh, Steven needs to grow a beard or a mustache. I'm pretty good with that. Look, guys, I'm one of them people that sparse is the word. Yeah. And I'd rather not experience. Do you, it. how often do you shave? Try to remember daily. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine Stephen with like some Charlie Chapman mustache or something? Oh, I'm so lucky. A little soul pads, yeah. No, I'm good with all that, boys. <laughs> hey, I, I, no, I'm good. Bless, look, bless the people that can grow facial hair, but I found out early in life that God loved me. You know what I mean? He, he gave me what Amen. he gave me, and that's where it is. And the Bible said every hair is numbered. So That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. That's all good. Well, hey, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we get back, we're going to do rapid-fire questions with rapid Tank. With so, uh, Henry. Is that right? Henry. Henry. What's your name? Keith. 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 <laughs> Henry Keith. It's like, all what right. does your mama call you? We'll call you Tank then. What's funny is my dad's dad 
Yeah. His name was Henry. See? Like, oh, so like someone, the shotgun. So somebody's name was Henry. Oh, yeah. Henry. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after these uh, quick break. All right. We are back. Steven? Uh, tank? How was your break? Mine was great. How was your tank? How was your tank? How was your tank? <laughs> Not half my, my tank was great. Uh, hi, I'm break. <laughs> hi, I'm break. <laughs> how, how was your How was your break, uh, Stephen? My break was fine. Yeah, I, I can see clearly now. <laughs> the rain is falling down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how was your break, Mr. Tank? It was great. I got to watch a window washer wash a window. That's right. that's a tongue twister. <laughs> that was a nice. I out. got to wash a window washer washer. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It's like Worcestershire sauce. Can you say that word? Just, 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 uh, Worcestershire. No, no. <laughs> I can't. Western shower. <laughs> Western shower. <laughs> I ain't putting that on my state. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bland. Oh. All right, so this is the uh, fun part of the show. Uh, it's called rapid fire questions. Are you, are you think you're ready for this tank? Yes, I was born ready. You was born ready. Are your are your boots laced? Slip-ons. He's wearing slip-ons. <laughs> so <dope. laughs> oh, okay. So we're going to play rapid-fire questions. Steven, you think he's going to do a good job? Absolutely. Everybody does. Yeah? Yeah. Everybody. It's only been me and you and this guy. <laughs> <Right. laughs> we do it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, rapid-fire questions. Uh, give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. If you're at home, he's excited. He didn't look Maybe. overly excited. Maybe he does a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, rapid fire questions. These are rapid fire. That means uh, you just rapid. It's just it's a real quick answer. It ain't got to be a long thought out question. No theological. No creepy Christian. Just give me a quick answer. Make it fun. It's it's a family show. Uh, as Stephen always. Do you ever say that? I think I'm the one that says that. I'm sure you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you must. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's probably me. You're okay. probably right. Uh, all right, you ready for this, Mr. Tank? Fire at will. Fire at will. Here we go. All right. First question. What was your dream job as a kid? Baseball or a lawyer. Baseball or a lawyer. Why a lawyer? Because I like to argue. And, well... Life's path took me to where I had to hire lawyers instead of becoming a lawyer. <laughs> Does, uh, do, you, do you argue with your wife? How does that work out for you? We argue rarely. Well, that's good. Praise God. Man. Yeah. And he got quiet on the uh, Yeah, let's yeah. just move right along. I, I was trying to, yeah. All right. Uh, what are three top items on your bucket list? Items. A new Harley, another Harley, um, another lifted truck, and the last one is to have the faith that Abraham had, like we were talking about last night. I don't know if that's an item or not, but it is one of my bucket list items to me. Oh, I thought that was four, because I heard, I, for, this is what I heard, I heard a Harley, another <laughs> Harley, Harley. <laughs> and maybe, then a truck. Maybe another Harley, but some to haul the Harleys with also. <laughs> and yeah. then, oh, then I'll, I'll put a little little cherry on top with, uh, yeah. uh, what do you say, faith? Faith. Well, I, I didn't mean two Harleys, I meant I don't want to get rid of the Harley, because uh. there's <laughs> memories on it, but I want another, Har a new Harley, oh. and keep the one I still have, so. Yeah. Okay. It was just three things, I promise. Moving right along. That was pretty good. Okay. Uh, all right. Here we go. This is going to be good. Uh, who would you, who would be the three guests at your dinner table? This could be past, present, future, biblical people. Who would it be? Three guests at your table. Well, I'd have to have Jesus there because I'd want to ask him some questions. And watching the show, the show, The Chosen makes me really think about man i wish i could have been there back then uh man that's tough so jesus daryl strawberry i like that answer actually go ahead but keep going jesus daryl strawberry and brett Favre. 
I, I like that answer too, because I actually I'm a Brett Favre fan too, so that's cool. I got all his rookie cards. Oh man, I got all his football cards from when he came from. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I would. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. That's great. All right. Uh, what is your proudest achievement? December thirteenth, two thousand twelve. Wow. You know what today is too, though. December twelfth. Well, I'm saying you know what today's date is. April 13th. It's the 13th, yeah. So, yeah, I just thought it was kind of... Yeah. God has a plan, and God has a, a way of doing things, doesn't he? 11 years and five months ago, he, he put a, rolled a tear down my cheek and told me you're about oh, to Oh, this is your anniversary? Life. 11 years and five months ago, yes, sir. Yeah, wow, yep. amazing. Praise God. Yeah, that's very good. All did, right. did you do that on purpose? Uh, no, I okay. promise. I'm going to rapid fire back at you. <laughs> what? <laughs> what made you want to bring Tank on the show? Uh, Jesus. Amen to that. And I just, without the cliche answer, I just enjoy having you, being around your company. Aww. So we just, yeah, and just the romance, I guess. Oh, <laughs> bromance. Bromance. Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right there. In there. Yeah. yeah. I tell you. Uh, all right, move right along. Um, what five things make you happy? My wife, my church, my kids, my faith. Right on. Is that four? You got five. Kids, Is that five? Church. Yeah. Oh, one more. Say the motorcycle. And, and, yeah, and my Harley. Yeah. It, it, you're not lying, Stephen. That, no, that is. Yeah. He's like my other motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the closest I get to God. Yeah. When I'm not in the Word, whether I'm in church or at home, yeah, it's on my bike. It's me and God and the wind and oh, yeah, ain't nothing like it. He's already thinking about the other motorcycle he's got. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Um, what is your superpower if you have one? If you don't have one, what would it be? If I didn't have one because I don't have one, my superpower would be making people do what I want them to do with my mind. Oh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, good oh, job, good. thank yeah. you. We're all, all right, you maybe, ready for this? Maybe I do have a superpower. Yeah. Wow. Man. Yes. Is that why you were doing jumping jacks over there in the corner? Yeah, oh. well, never know what happened there. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, all right. Tell us a weird fact that happened to you. Or I'm sorry. Let me back up. Tell us a weird fact you know for no reason. A weird fact that you know for no reason. It's like useless information. You know what it is? It's absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's completely useless. I don't know one. And someone just told me one the other day that I wanted to remember. And I said, that's one of those useless things. You know, I said, I don't mean that in a bad way. But it's one of those useless things that you probably never utilize again. But it's like, wow. Well, I gave one earlier in the show. Remember that giraffes have a thir a three times, uh, 30 times more likely to get hit by lightning than people. See what I mean? It was useless. I already forgot. <laughs> They're just not a shelter. Stay away from them. I know yeah. that's right. Don't crawl under them. Keep going. I, you want to hear a fun fact, though? I got a fun fact for you. I have a giraffe tattooed on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that was a donkey. Uh, <laughs> well, move right along. We won't, we won't, we won't, uh, anyways, move right along. Um, if you could take one prop from a movie set, what would it be? You know, that movie, Passion? Yeah. I would love to have that cross that Saul helped Jesus carry. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, that the, the significance, the meaning behind it. And I always, I just, I don't know. But yeah. that, that's one movie prop that always stands out. That's why on our Easter service and your playing that movie in the background up there on the screens. Mm -hmm. It just always gives me chills because that was like a movie that I really paid attention to once I turned my life around. Oh, I watched yeah. it before because it came out way before then. Yeah. This, this, the depth 
or significance of what, what it actually symbolizes for me. When I, what I, the symbolism I took from it after I got clean and was different. Yeah. You know, my life was going a different path. It really like, I was like, man, there's so much meaning in well, that. There's, wow, you know? Yeah, well, it just hits you differently, you know? Way different. Well, and the, the thing was, was your life wasn't, uh, the, like the cross wasn't attractive to you at that time, you know what I mean? When, when, when you saw it the first time, you know what I mean? But then right. once you saw it again, it's like, oh, now I get this. The only other movie prop I would like to have would be the motorcycles and Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. If I want to be selfish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah. I don't remember a motorcycle I didn't see on TV or in the movie or something. <laughs> no, that's right. You know, it caught my eye. All my heroes were seen sitting on them. Steve McQueen, all of them, you know what I mean? There's a new movie that's coming out called, uh, it's, it's got the guy that played, an El played the Elvis guy in Tom Hardy. It's, uh, it's like Biker, something Biker. Hmm. Yeah, it takes place in the 60s. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, real quick, I have to ask you both. Are your, uh, are your motorcycles potty trained? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My, mine dribbles every once in a while. It's yeah. usually because the, the diaper or the, what I call the oil filter isn't cinched on enough. Oh, well, praise God. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, well, the truth is about a bucket list and stuff, mine changes. You know what I mean? It's never the same thing having somebody over to dinner. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, let's let's finish this last two, and I'm going to ask you, because I, I, I want to know, because I, I want to go biblical. Who would you have at your table? But, but let's let's uh, ask these last two questions real quick. Hold on, calm down. Okay. I'm just playing. No, my my wheels started turning. So I know it did. Right I, know, I know it did. Your will or your wheels? Both. <laughs> I, I have to will it into action before it becomes something. <laughs> Something from nothing. That's right. Yeah, that nothing you don't like. Yeah, yeah, it's all cool. <laughs> that what was that, what question was that one? Uh, uh, oh, the it was his oh, response it, to oh the weird fact. Yeah, it was a weird fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, where do you find your inspiration? Thoughts of my dad, and usually the Bible. Yeah. Really, yeah. I mean, I can't say that, that. You know, we were just talking about that. Man. Yeah. The biggest, the, the best thing I did was stop using my phone for the Bible and actually using the Bible that my mother bought me with my name on it so that I have to be in the Word. Yeah. I could be in the Word on my phone and then answer a text message or, yeah. or go ahead and, and play that game that's in Game Launcher. But when I'm in the Bible, it's me and God. It's me yes. and His Word, my, my, my sword to fend off the enemy, you know, and, and it's been a game changer, especially this week at work. Yeah. Amen. All right. Excuse me. Last question. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Ooh. It's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? Run a business. Run a business? What kind of business? Probably the one I work for. Oh, okay. Praise God. Do you I, want to drop their name? Action Spring Company, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Action Spring Company. I thought he was going to be like, a motorcycle company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He can produce all the motorcycles he wants. Do it all over and over again. I'll sell you metal products all day long. <laughs> Call your local salesman at Action Spring. His name's Keith Lawrence. Praise God. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll give him a round of applause. He did a good job. Very good job. Yes. We are proud. There it go. There it goes. Oh, there it is. Let's give it one more time. A round of applause. All right. How do you think he did? Did you do all right? How do you think mm. he did, Stephen? Before he answered, how do you think he did? Uh, there was a three moment and maybe a couple of fives. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. We're, is it on a scale from zero to ten? No, it's on a scale of one to five. Oh, okay. I <laughs> left the zero out of it. Yeah. I thought I had like five ones. No, no, no. no. Good. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Stephen, um, 
What was uh, what? What would be your three guests at the table? You can do you can do biblical names. You can do old historical figures. Because uh, I'm gonna do one, but I want you to go first since you had a thought. Because I wonder who beat your table. Man, every every answer in the book came to my head, but was it really my desire to have them at the table, or would they just be there because that's the natural answer? You know, you're in the Bible, so like you said, what's the biblical answer? Well, I don't know. Just give me a portion of Isaiah, and uh, who else showed up at Jesus's? You know what I mean? <laughs> hey. I, I, I want to go a step further. I think it was Moses, right? Yeah, Moses, Elijah, and yeah. and Jesus. And Jesus, yeah. and then they were going to build them tents. Yeah, Peter yeah. and them, yeah. 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 I, I, I want to go like this, this city. If you could do a podcast with somebody, who would it be? You know, I do Peter, I do Abraham Lincoln, and let's just go with. Uh, oh, here we go, I, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. That would be a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? I want to be there. That would, yeah, that would be a great would conversation. Be, yeah. No, I want to be there. Those were good choices. Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna listen to them talk. <laughs> <laughs> I personally would like to see uh, Charles Darwin. Jesus. Oh, that'd be an interesting conversation. Yeah. And then like Chuck Missler. Who's Chuck Missler? Old school guy that literally breaks down the Bible chapter after chapter. Yeah. Book after book and relates it to the Torah. You know, the first five books of the, of the Bible, he breaks them way down and, and goes through extenuating and in, in so much detail. Talks about the 12 tribes and breaks them all down from father all the way down to the last one. I mean, he, if you haven't ever, he's dead now, you know, God rest his soul. But it was something that me and my wife watch on YouTube. Him look up Chuck, Chuck Missler and he'll go through from Genesis all the way to Revelations. All right. You and said Darwin also. Why Darwin? Because his theory is that we all came from apes. Right. Natural progression of a species is what they call it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, it was the elevation, or yeah, or uh, evolution. Evolution. Ev evolution. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, a theory that's been expounded on and expounded on and expounded on so many times that you actually miss the true meaning and content of what the man was speaking about. That's yeah. why I would like to hear it directly you know, from him. Yeah, human human species as a whole has evolved in our Most mentality. Definitely. Whether we came from a dog or I like dogs, so <laughs> I love them. <laughs> or or the suit on the back of a motorcycle tailpipe, you know what I mean? One way or see, I got to plug in again. <laughs> <laughs> but one way or another, one way or another, we progress. If I'm not progressing each day that I get up, if I'm not, then I'm falling short of the kingdom of God because it progresses over and over and over. Oh yeah, it Amen revitalizes itself, and. Who would I have at my at my dinner table? Everybody. It'd just be really cool to make that one request. And Jesus, I told you. He'd look at your dad and say, I told you that's what he was going to say. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to see everybody. Praise God. But not really know who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Somebody out back there. Yeah. Mm. It'd just be the fact that everybody's there. You don't have to know them all. Everybody's there. Yeah, you just, hey, man, how are you? What's up, dude? I like that. What's yeah. your story? Oh, yeah. What's your story? Yeah, your name was who? Look, there's a thousand people. I'm going to forget who you are. But tell me something I'll remember forever. That's yeah. right. You know? That's good. That's real yeah. good. Oh, philosophical. I can get there. Yeah. Man. I like that. Yeah. All right. Um, so much deeper. Than he, he, he is, I know. Sorry. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Um, I want to switch gears on you guys. Do it. Uh, so, Tank, we've been doing this thing called Confessions of the Day. A lot of people haven't seen these yet on the, on some of the episodes. Uh, but we are going to ask you, what's a confession of the day that you always tell yourself? What's a confession? Confession. Before you say that, confessions of speaking God's word over your life or reminding yourself who you are in Christ. What is something that you normally say when you wake up and go, you young man or a man of God? 
usually it goes as something like this. You are a handsome man. You are a godly man. You do deserve happiness, and you're going to go seek it. So God, guide my way. Praise God. Okay. And that's usually my morning, and I, I'm actually not looking in a mirror, but it's usually when I wake up and sit up because the first thing I do is read my word of the day, that the app that Dixie put out, you know, or that Dixie sends out. Yeah. Um, I read that. I, I pray that I read that, but that's my usually my prayer every morning is, all right, thank you for waking me up. You are a good man. You are worthy of happiness. Go be a joy in someone's life. God, show me the way. What a cool confession, yeah. That's good. All right, yeah. yeah. That was good. All right, well, thank you for that. Uh, people back, people out there watching at home, they're going to enjoy that because some of them are like, I am handsome, boy, you know? <laughs> you know, and, and how that got started was someone told me that if we don't, esteem of blacks build self-esteem. If I don't know that I have any self-worth, start speaking positive affirmations to myself in yes. God's name. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Eventually, I'll believe it. Yes. And we know I'm not a small fellow by any means. And there was a word that used to offend me and kind of how my name came about and why I carried myself and been mull over people's because you called me fat and I would let you let you find out just how fat I was, you know. And today, man, the reality is I'm a chunky monkey. <laughs> that's how God hey. made me. That's how God intended hey. me to be. Yeah. And, and that's okay. So that's why my, my confession and my morning prayer, I, I confess to him that, you know what, I am handsome, I am worthy of happiness, I am a good man, and I am going to do my best to follow your will because I need you to guide me. Amen. That's right. So, Amen, there we that's go. good. There's a little bit, little more, little bit more for you. Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, we're at the end of our, we're coming to a closing point. Stephen, do you have any final thoughts? I do. I like the affirmation part in the morning. Sometimes it's all you can do to get out of, oh, good morning, God. You know what I mean? Mm, that's good. But, but as you said, as you move through the, the, the word, if you pick it up and you read a, a proverb, a psalm, or vice versa, a psalm, and then a proverb, it depends on how my dog's mood is as to what I actually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how pushy is she this morning, you know? But then you get into your daily devotion. And you start, before I even really take off out the door, I've got something in me that's saying I'm conscious of God and God's conscious of me. Mm. That's right. Yeah. That's good. That's right. Yeah. Tank, have you had fun today? You got any final thoughts? I've enjoyed it, you know, and, it, and it's uh, crazy how when we do our best to, to lean on God, to push into God, as Pastor says, and actually seek his face, yeah. that everything even in your household changes you know like yes. we have chalkboards up in our house now and every morning whatever the morning scripture is we have a prayer list date and then the morning scripture and yeah. every morning we change that every morning it sits right up on the bar so you can't help but miss it when you're walking out of either the kids bedrooms or our bedroom because there it is bam yeah and it's cool because even if i stub my toe walking out of the bedroom the minute I go walking through the kitchen to go to the garage to go get my truck and leave, bam, there's God again right there looking right at me as I walk right by it. <laughs> That's good. Go ahead and stop and get back into God. Hey, you made me kind of jealous of your situation, bro. It's like, I want a yeah. chalkboard now. Yeah, I, I want a two-bike garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you go ahead with that. <laughs> No, I'm very blessed. I have a two bike garage. Yes, you do. Yes, hey, man. My my uh, situation is everybody's sitting back saying he don't have an idea one. Yeah, I do. I walk through here very blessed. Hey, Amen. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So does he. You're so a, you are a blessing, though. You know that. Mm, thank you very this much. This podcast has revealed to me a Stephen I didn't know. Oh, there you go. Because I just saw the guy that walks around and makes sure things are okay over there. Yeah. And when I see you on the show, I'm like, that's why that day I told you, I said, man, thank you. And you, and then you hugged me, which I was like, hey, wow, that's cool. You hugged me, sweet. But, <laughs> One of my weird moments. Yeah, Sorry. But I, I was, yeah, you're, you're a blessing. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Amen. And thank well, you. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming on the show, Tank. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you're watching, whether it's noon or morning time or evening time, God bless you. Uh, make sure you hit like this video, share this video, ma make a comment below about what you thought about Tank's testimony today and, and how God used uh, him to kind of share uh, 
God bless you guys. Please, again, just give us a comment on, on today's episode and maybe even give us some topics about what we could talk about in the future. Again, Definitely. make sure you hit that notification bell. Anytime I make a video, you will be notified that we make a new music, a new music video, a new uh, episode, new episodes every Saturday, 10 a.m. Uh, it's always been a great time today. Steven? Your suggestions are being listened to. They are? If you text Levi Blue. At Levi Blue got your message dot com. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> he he will listen to your idea and probably put it into some kind of podcast where we can utilize it to bring the glory of Christ. Amen. Thank you. All right. Well, again, I am your host. Thank you for tuning in today's show. Thank you for coming, Tank. We appreciate you coming. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed having you, Stephen. Until next time. Tell them God bless. God bless.